Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to Architects of Lore, the one and only weekly podcast where two buzzing cousins sit around and discuss the age-old art of storytelling. And this is the episode where we exclusively create something of our own. And I'm not going to tell you what one, but I am going to tell you I'm disappointed. But I'm your host, Zach. That's my cousin, Devin. Devin, how you doing tonight? Good. Hello. Hopefully, you don't have buzzing this episode. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say hello back. You just looked at yeah. me. You just, you just. I'm trying to give you your due. I'm trying to let you be the star of the show because spoiler alert, people. Your boy Zach over here is going away for the weekend, and Devin is fully in charge of this episode getting edited and published and released on time. Well, you never said publish. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know how to do that. Oh, I don't yeah. even have the information for that. It's in the Google Doc. You will figure it out. I am supremely confident in your ability. There will be zero cuts, people. <laughs> well, if you get a four-hour podcast on the feed, you know why. Kevin is not even saying anything now. He's just shaking his head and shrugging. But I got Oh, this confidence. is going to be a video podcast. They're going to see through all your lies. I got No, that's what you you literally just shrugged your fucking head. I did not shrug. Shoulder. You're like, mm, whatever. <laughs> we'll see on the feed. I got confidence in your editing, Devin, because a listener found Taylor Cross's masterpiece that was directed and edited by Devin cross it I was not edited by me just directed never mind I am not really confident in your editing <laughs> but what did you think of anymore. I'm with you we finally found it folks let me just set the scene for you Devin texts me I'm working out I'm working on the body because you know I knew that this was probably going to be a video podcast this week because I didn't tell Devin until just now that he was editing it but I knew beforehand See, I'm getting I'm getting the pump on, you know, working the glamour muscles. And I just get a text message from Devin. Taylor found it. Check it out. So I just text back. I'm working out. I'll watch it later. He goes, it's only three minutes. Just do a three minute plank. <laughs> <laughs> so I finished out my workout and I'm like, you know, what? can I even do a three minute plank? So I throw it on, you know, on my laptop. I start going. Either I'm not in shape or this 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 video just knocked me on my socks because at about a minute 45, I had to fall down. And yeah, I mean, the, the, it it's so powerful that I couldn't. I literally my arms were wobbling at that point. Just how powerful. Yeah, this I mean, video what do was. you think about I'm with you? I want a reaction. The thing is, like. I'll give you my reaction to it, but I don't know if I want to say anything about it. And I want you just to put well, just pause it, the video go check it out, description. unpause it, and then okay. come back and let's get your review. Because we can't so do three weeks of I'm with you stuff. It will be the video will the link will be in the description below because Devin's really good at that. He will put it in there, so you will be able on to YouTube. click it and find it. And YouTube and on Spotify and Apple, because it's literally just one description. You just put it right there. And then you'll be fine. So everybody's watched it at this point. Everybody's seen the masterpiece of I'm with you. And it really goes after the church. <laughs> Man, like it actually fits with the theme Dude, of God go and philosophy. The church. Real hard at the church. <laughs> Just it's more at a religious fundamentalist. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What did you think of Taylor's performance? Taylor, honestly, I thought it was, I was unnerved, which is what I believe you guys were going for. So that I don't was know a good performance. What we were going for. I was very unnerved. Just the blankness of his stare mm -hmm. and the eyes that were coming across. And that, that scene where he's in, I don't know, fucking Aldi's parking lot, some fucking parking lot, wherever you guys are in sort of a supermarket or gas station. <laughs> and he's handing out blank sheets of paper. And I'm just looking at the people in the background going, they definitely don't know those people, right? <laughs> like, no, I, we, those are strangers. Yeah. Taylor just shows up and he's hanging out blank, like purple paper to people, <laughs> like, or pink or whatever. It's not like sheets of white paper. There's no writing yeah. on it. You could no, see it no, in the there's shot. Nothing. You can see in the shot, there's nothing on the piece of paper. And if I, if I walked up and I just saw, you know, 
a man. I don't know what you had, whatever camera, but a camera man. Phone with my uh, gimbal on it. Okay, so I have a, a. If I walked up to that scene and I just see a person with a phone and a gimbal filming another man with a blank fucking stare on his face, just trying to hand out a piece of paper, I'd be like, "I'm not getting shot today," and I would just turn around and leave. <laughs> so it's very unnerved. And uh, it definitely went a dark place that I didn't think it was going to. Yeah. I thought maybe at the end there was going to be suicide. Was it? Spoiler alert. Sorry, trigger warning. No, it's just straight murder. (laughs) Just murder. (laughs) And then after the murder is where the character livens up (laughs) and starts smiling. And then he's having dinner with himself. Or dinner, and he's laughing, and you think, oh, he's sitting across from his wife or his girlfriend or stuff, and then it's just a mirror, and he's laughing <laughs> at himself. And then it cuts to where we all started. Yeah, and the whole... Like, there's no dialogue from the character in the 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 video at all. It's just, I don't... I'm assuming you just ripped it from a fucking Pat Robert Patterson. Not Patterson. That was AM radio. That was on the radio when we were recording that day. So he just, like, went out and recorded it (laughs) on his phone. Yeah, no wonder why it sounded like shit. (laughs) But it works for the movie, doesn't it? It does work. But, uh, honestly, for what I was expecting, which was nothing, because I didn't know anything about it, I was like, there's at least a coherentness to this video that I was not expecting. There is a full encapsulated story in this three minutes. So bravo to both of you. And uh, you. I thought it was, I was yeah, unsettled. At a, and that's at a what it was. Comedy it festival. Be. And um, Taylor played it at a comedy festival? I believe so. That's not getting laughs, man. <laughs> And the audience didn't know what to do with themselves. I didn't either. And I was I mean, I laugh every face. time I watch it. I think it's hilarious. No, it's not. <laughs> we put Josh's face in the LA River and then didn't even shoot a close up on his face in the LA River. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm just laughing at the production of it. You're laughing at the production from the outside look again. I was like, this is just. This is really sending a message about religious fundamentalism, aka the church, that they're fucking crazy. Check it and out. I'm with there you. was no comedy in it whatsoever. I'm with you at Taylor Cross YouTube. And uh, check it out. So definitely fits the theme. So hey, good job. And Taylor, thanks for finding it. Great guy. Great guy. Star Turns of I'm out. with you on YouTube and Tuesday's Flu whenever it comes out. Turns out I did find his youtube channel but i skipped over it because the first video is a 13 minute tutorial on how to do your eyebrows the scottish way i did see that and i was like what is <laughs> so this? i was like and i, I didn't like, oh, watch no, this it. Isn't his. yep that's his <laughs> he's like yeah that's my page <laughs> so did like I, we're gonna get the architects of lore buff on this video so Hopefully. You know, those views are going to be in the 20s by next week. So shout yeah, out Taylor. I love Cross. how the title still has the dot MOV in it. Like he didn't even, he just uploaded it. <laughs> no, just uploaded it. Ugh. But yeah, how have you been, Devin? How was your week? It was good. I played a golf tournament. Oh, been, yes, I did. I, I challenged you last week to keep track of how many shots they took of yours and how many balls you lost. So what's the final tally? They only lost one ball. Pretty good. If at all. Um, I think we used. I want to say six of my shots. So like. Little under eight percent of the total shots, maybe more. I don't know. So, but just have to see you were playing a scramble, record. yeah, with four. And we people. came in five under, so you, that's about a 67. That is a 67. And they used six of your shots, yeah, about eight nine percent of the shots total shots were yours. And they used some of my drives and putts, so but that's encapsulated in the six total. Maybe it could be ten. Could be 10. maybe ten. Let's give it. 
Let's give you a solid 10. 10 uh, shots. It was fun. We lost. It was fun. Well, as long as you had a good time. Yeah, I'm going to offing Saturday, which is Let's more l- of like a par three with carts. That's the one where I hit an 80 on the par 70. You did not tell me that that was a par three course. I said it's basically a par three. How is it a par 70? It's got some other, it's got like some par four. What's it like 200 fucking yard par fives? Maybe. <laughs> All right, so you get to film a little bit, throw it up on the Architects of the Lore Instagram story. Because I saw Maybe. we were getting some traction on that with, you know, the posters and the stories. And I'm disappointed in our audience again. Very much. They just like what they like. I don't you know? think that they like what they like. I think they vote out of spite sometimes. I don't know. I think they like what they like. So did Matt Murphy ever uh, send you the code? No, he didn't. Matt, that's not on. Wow. Yeah. What if we start from the beginning and then like... I don't think we're supposed out? to say his last name, so you need to edit that out. Why? That's like a super <laughs> common name. You can't say people's last names who haven't given us permission. Taylor Cross is fine because Taylor Cross wants his name everywhere. Devin Cross it. <laughs> well, fuck it. It's on you, bro. All right. We'll see. I'll just. But you can't him. say other people's last names that aren't associated with the production. So I can't say your last name. No, of course not. Yeah. Because it's definitely totally different than all of the last names that we've said now. Big. Completely different. You never know. Never know. We're uh, cousins on our mother's side. Not true. <laughs> um, it is so hot in here. Yeah. Uh, so fun story. I'm out here in Syracuse, New York, people, as you all know. Well, we like to call the bastion of creativity in central New York. None of those words that I said were true except for Syracuse and Central. Um, but two days ago, I wake up. No, yesterday, I woke up. I'm getting ready to go to work. And then I uh, look out the window, and it's the goddamn night of the living dead out there. It's just stark orange yellow sky of fucking haze and mist and smoke. And I just look at myself. I was like, today's the day. Today's the day that the world ends. But I got my car and I went to work because that's late stage capitalism, people. Yeah, why you would gotta, you go to you work? You got to pay those bills. You got to pay those bills. I think one of the the internet's undefeated because one of the funniest things I've seen is that somebody posts the thing. It's like, if World War Three happened today, what would you do? And right underneath it, it's a top comment. It's like, I think my job wants me to work that day, so probably work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I felt like I was in Los Angeles there for a little bit, Devin. You know? Smog and smoke, orange skies. You know? I felt like hell was brutal sometimes. rising up on Earth. I was like, am I in room 666? The critically acclaimed original architects of lore idea that may or may not have won the fan voting? It didn't. No, it didn't. Because it some of not. you suck. Only one person voted for Room 666, and I'm almost positive they've never listened to a single second of this podcast. So what do you think they voted on? Just, just the fucking poster that they saw? Wait, movie poster? I don't know. The, the movie poster for that one was a fucking red blob in a door. It was a red tint on a door. You're right. And it was magic. A blob is completely different. You know what? Now, you know, since I'm editing this one, uh-huh. I think you're going to have to do the art for next week or uh-huh. uh, for next study. I want four movie posters from you. I want to see how, how we're going to do. Uh, I will do four movie posters if you edit the next four podcasts. Okay. Fine. Let's switch roles. I'm going to focus on social media. You focus on quality of editing and making sure that our podcast gets out on time. True. 
Except the only time it was late, you were in control. It was never late. It just didn't upload correctly onto Spotify. It was on Apple Podcast. Just saying we lost a bunch. That's true. Of Those people never came back either. Never came back. They did not. They were like, like oh, these they guys took off. Consistent. They, they took off one week. Fuck them. Fuck them. Straight to hell. Again, that one didn't win. No. Book of Bart didn't win. No. I want the audience members to look me in my fucking eyes. You tell me right now. Did you vote for Arangia? Land of the Gods because it was a great story or because Devin and I had a lot of fun talking about it and making fun of Georgetown or did you do it because you were like there is zero structure to this and these people cannot handle doing an outline of this movie because I think it's the better one one. yeah sweet movie poster with dolphin bulldog hybrids yeah obviously Devin called me on that he's like I got nothing for this idea man I got nothing. I don't know what to do. I was like, I don't care what you do, except there has to be fucking bulldog faces superimposed on a dolphin's body. And he's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about it. That's yeah, I did. And I got it. We got four of them. You got it. Now it's time for the movie movie game. All right. Hit me, Devin. Oh, I go first. You always you've gone first this whole study. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Except for Gene Kelly after belting one out in a deluge. Nobody puts baby in a corner except for Gene Kelly belting one out in a deluge. So the second one is singing in the rain. Okay. And I'm supposed to know the first one, not the second one, but singing in the rain is a pretty fucking classic movie. So the first one's definitely not. It's Patrick Swayze. Yeah. No one puts baby Swayze. in the corner. I don't know why, but all I'm thinking of is Roadhouse. <laughs> but I know it's not Roadhouse. <laughs> this guy doesn't know movies, people. Oh, what's the fucking one where he's like a camp counselor or something? And then that 16-year-old girl comes in, and he like definitely is probably a little too old for her. And there's like a little pedo stuff going on. Like, oh, fuck, what's that movie? Dude, I know it. So I much trigger warning from you in the first 10 minutes. We're going to be demonetized on YouTube. Have we made any money on YouTube yet? No. No, no, no. All right. Fuck, no. I know this. I know this. It's not Roadhouse. It's not Roadhouse. It's not Ghost. Let's just go through all the Patrick Swayze movies. Oh, those are the only two I know. Roadhouse and Ghost. It's not Sweet 16. No. Yeah, you're dancing. I can see the movie in my oh, fucking dancing. head. You're uh, dancing. I'm dancing. Dancing. Okay. Dirty dancing. In there the we go. There we go, bud. What's the What's the movie? I don't even think Patrick Swayze is in this movie. He might be. But what's the movie with the girl? Who does the iconic dance scene and then like pulls a cord and waters? Goes on her like in a chair. Remember, because it's that scene where she's like silhouette. Isn't that dirty dancing? Is it dirty dancing? It might be dirty dancing. But that's not like Jennifer Conley, right? No, that's not Jennifer Conley. That's way too, she's way too young for that. Flash dance. Flash dance. Is Patrick Swayze in Flash dance? I don't know. You're on the IMDb page right now. No, Jennifer Beals. I'm on Jennifer Beals. Beal. No, he's not. All right. Well, we got there in the end, folks. Yeah. Full points for me. Patrick Swayze Hour brought to you by Town TV. All right, Devin. Furiosa leads an elaborate liberation of wives from the clutches of an apocalyptic gearhead, enlisting the help of a PhD rockin' bouncer of the Double Deuce, the rowdiest bar in the South. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Devin's looking like so perplexed. Well, this has to be the man. one the, that you just <laughs> mentioned, right? Maybe. Roadhouse? Maybe, Maybe it is. It's gotta be Roadhouse.
Mad Max Fury Roadhouse. Yeah, that's fucking it. <laughs> I wonder if I subconsciously like kind of pre-read that one and then that's how Roadhouse got stuck in my head. Maybe. Or if that was just a serious coincidence. That'd be a crazy coincidence. Because sometimes I like pre-read the ones that you're going to get just to be like, yeah, he probably knows that versus like, what the fuck is that? I never pre-read mine because that's cheating. And that's why I get the fucking one that had Dirk Diggler. No, not Dirk Diggler. Dick Tracy or whatever the fuck that one was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Dirk Diggler's Buggy Nights. Great film. A killer St. Bernard unleashes its deadly jaws upon a little German boy with an imaginary Hitler friend. Imaginary Hitler friend. I haven't seen this movie, but that's the one with Taika Waititi, right? Mm Mm-hmm. A killer St. Bernard? Killer St. Bernard. Yeah. It's not Beethoven. Because Beethoven didn't kill anybody. Fuck! What is that movie? I could see the Taika Waititi movie. Give me the hint for movie two. And if the hint is just Taika Waititi plays Hitler, I'm going to be pissed. It's Taika Hitler Waititi. looks a plays... lot like Taika Waititi. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> you don't know the first one? A killer a killer St. Bernard? Yeah. And it's not Beethoven? No. A killer's Pet Cemetery? No. Is it like a... like a One word name. Name Bob of the Bob? dog. No. What's the year? It's a Stephen King book. And it's not Pet Cemetery? 18, 1983. Fucking Christ, really? Do you know this movie? Yeah. It's the name of the dog. Yeah. Not it. Starts with a C. Carrie? Carrie's no. a fucking girl. <laughs> Obviously not Carrie. Starts with a C? Yes. Cocksucker. That's the first movie, right? Yeah. I think you just got give me give, give me that you got one. Zero points here. Yeah, give me that one, and I want to see if I can get the second one. Cujo. Cujo? Oh, it's yeah. fucking Jojo. Jojo's Rabbit or something like that. Jojo Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit. I don't know Cujo. Cujo right. Joe Rabbit. Cujo Joe Rabbit. You know Cujo? Yeah. You hate scary movies. I know. I haven't seen it, but like it's one of those movie clips that um I think like John Stewart or something, someone like always would play. So I think ever a couple of weeks ago, ever since I said that I was too good at this game, the Lord has struck me down. Just take yeah, the away. movie, movie God, the movie, movie God. So Davin, this is your chance to become the movie, movie God. Are you ready? Yeah. A dirty rodent yearning for culinary fame teams up with a human chef who is a sociopathic teenager birthed from the loins of Tilda Swinton and John C. Riley. I know the first one's Ratatouille. Yeah, that's the uh, easy one. The loins of Tilda Swinton and John C. Riley. Yep. Sociopathic teenager. E full dead. Um teenager, huh? Was a scary movie? Yep. From 2011. I don't, I don't like scary movies. It's Cujo. I don't know. Ratatouille I don't know what Cujo. it is. What's the what's the hint? Uh, Ezra Miller plays the sociopath. So he wasn't really acting, huh? Shit. Oh, 
Who's getting us canceled? <laughs> Dude, someone said some producer was like, the flash is gonna be so good, everyone's just gonna forget about everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Can a movie be that good? I don't know, but I don't think they're getting a a fourth uh, Fantastic Beast movie. Yeah, well, those fucking movies sucked. Yeah, the first one was at least like the premise. The first one's good. Fantastic. The first Bo- one's good. Fantastic yeah. Beast. Yeah, but the rest of them are just like, why do you sk- sk- keep calling that? Just say the fucking Wizarding Wars. Also. Also, they suck. They had multiple just bad movies that they just forgot, like, aren't in the movies. Yeah. Like, Nagini, not in the movie anymore. Everyone's like, ooh, how's Nagini, a woman, turned into a snake? Nah. Who gives we're not a going shit? With that anymore. <laughs> um, I don't know. What's the, what is it? Annabelle? I know that's about a doll. Rat to two. We need to talk about Kevin. Yeah, I would have never gotten there. All righty. Well, I'm glad that you played it up and you were entertaining in your loss and you will never be a god, Devin. Did better than you. That's fair. That's Just fair. Saying. Now, Devin, the audience members love the new segment where they get to guess the next one. So I'm going to hold it up to the camera and I'm going to let you read it. Are you serious? Uh, tours from the United States endures an incredibly painful transition into a moon influenced creature of the night that travels through a wormhole to meet a dude wearing a metallic bunny mask. All right, people, but the longer we go is the more that I'm afraid that Devin just won't edit it or do anything <laughs> with it. So why don't we go ahead and get to the outline? For some god known reason, Orangia, land of the gods, won this week. Shout out to our gods and philosophies weekend. original ideas alone on the range, which is about um, who gives a shit? No one voted for it. We got to yeah, but we got to fucking get clips for this shit. God damn it. <laughs> talking about wanting to do social media and he doesn't even know how to set up clips for social media. Yeah, because I'm pissed. Well, because Arrangia yeah. Land of the Gods won. <laughs> but shout out to Architects of Lore Original Ideas and the Study to Gods and Philosophy. Original idea number one, alone on the range where a man who loses everything hides away from society that took everything from him on his own farm and he learns to trust people again and become a decent person. Through the help of a 12-year-old boy. Played by Ezra Miller. <laughs> That's not true. Um, idea number two. Room 666. If you've gone to hell, or the DMV, shocking alert, very similar. That's what Room 666 is about. And this is for the normal people, not the really bad people. They're still in real hell, real far down. This is yeah, for this people is like a who, first a top layer of hell. Top layer of hell. Where they experience the terribleness of hell through the boring and mundaneness of a office space DMV type person because something inside of them is holding them there. And our main character learns to forgive themselves through the help of his granddaughter. And then they let that shit go and go somewhere else. I don't know, because they open the door and leave. That's how the movie ends. I think having what we're assuming, but who knows? We'll, we'll find that one out. Idea number three, the book of Bard. Did you There's say Monty Bard Python. or Bart? Bart. The book of Bart. There's Monty Python style a historical comedy takes place in Middle Eastern Europe where Bart, a thief. I don't remember the Middle Eastern Europe part, but all right. What do you think it was present day? No, I just thought it was America. Why would it be in America? Because we're it doesn't Americans, make any sense. Devin. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. America's stupid. Uh, <laughs> Dixie chick. The idea to put it in America is stupid, is what I'm saying. Uh, don't get us canceled by this country. Jeez. Um, They're called the chicks now, okay? Not the Dixie chicks. Just yeah, the remember chicks. when they everyone hated them? Mm-hmm. That was funny. Um, 
Oh yeah, the Book of Bart, a Monty Python esque comedy <laughs> in Middle Europe, where Bart, a thief, talks his way out of uh, getting in trouble by claiming he is the prophet Bart and starts his own religion, which gets pretty popular until he learns they're using this religion for bad. And then he changes his ways and dies eventually. And we learn out, learn that the whole thing is real. And he goes straight to hell. Straight to hell. Because he kind of woke up theme. someone before noon on a Tuesday. Got a running theme in these movies that they go straight to hell. And finally, your winner, folks. Arrangia, Land of the Gods. So Devin, why don't you go ahead and share final draft? Let's move on. You got to give a description for it. And I think the audience can tell you it is well overdue for your turn to type. So why don't you go ahead and open file draft? All right, here we go. Boom. Regia. Land of the gods. The fuck is this? It's not final draft. Yes, it is. This is final draft 12. Look at the top fucking left. I can't see that. <laughs> oh, because that, that portion's not shown. It's final draft 12. I'm sorry that you have the old final draft. Jeez. Yeah. Hey, collaboration. See if it lets me collaborate. Can't believe you actually got it. This is crazy. Yeah, I got you just it. Did it just to just to spite me, huh? Yeah. 100 <laughs> percent You want to get me to do anything? It's out of spite, obviously. I love it. And I don't want to hear any fucking bullshit about this isn't how it's written, blah, blah, blah. This is punctual, factual errors. I don't give a shit. Okay, we're just getting the idea out there. All right, arrange your land of the gods. All right, you All can right, probably Devin, take a collaboration. Why don't you go that. ahead and uh, read what's been read? Read it out loud. You motherfucker. Read it out loud. <laughs> Act one, Orangia <laughs> is the land of the gods. You write like a book. <laughs> this has nothing to do with anything. Read it out loud for the people. <laughs> Orangia is the land of the gods, set in prehistory of the planet Nostros, a.k.a. Pantalon 5. Orangia is the continent-sized island surrounded by the turmoil tide, the far-ranging and all-encompassing ocean. It is a land populated by humans ruled over and provided for by the 13 gods who walk among them. And the gods are like two feet taller than humans for no reason whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to get you off book writing. Um, So far, so perfect. Keep going. Why did you bold those? I don't know. Arrange your nostrils and turmoil is high. Those aren't character yeah. names. I don't fucking know. What did I say? What did I say? I don't want to fucking know about syntax shit over here. Okay. okay? Exterior, arrange it. Day. A young boy with with, with sand swept hair. <laughs> this isn't a book. <laughs> Vince <laughs> is playing with friends in an idyllic field. Also, not a book. <laughs> He goes to catch the ball, but <laughs> slips on the sand edge of a cliff and tumbles down. He is unhurt, but finds a piece of pottery in the kicked up earth depicting people, a place, and technology he has never seen before. Mince looks down the ravine into the darkness. Ghost, B.O. whispering. Not how you do that. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? <laughs> Tell your sto- tell our story. Mince is enthralled, but his mother calls him from above. He pockets the pottery, takes one last look down the ravine, smiles, and climbs back up. That one's fine. I mean, you probably don't That's need nice. the enthralled part, but I think that one's fine. Um, oh, I appreciate you arrange saying a it's fine. dig site many years later day. Many years have passed. What? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> People need to know many years have passed. You just said many years later. <laughs> and Mince is now a young man. He stands at the table covered in hand drawn map overlooking a dig site of his own making. Okay. There we go. 
I do think we need to start with seeing the guys and the people. Yeah, that's 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 the fucking voiceover and all this first paragraph. You know, we'll we'll do like a little panoramic drone shot of gods and shit. And yeah, and I think you field. should see like the god of the harvest out there in the field. You really are farmers. on this harvest god. Love the harvest god. I can't think of any other things that you need a god for other than growing food. All right, seems... so you want me to put this in here? Just say we see the gods interacting with the people. Right? Harvest god. Bolded, Devin. See that? Bolded. Not spelled right, but bolded. You're right. Get fucked. Um, yeah, because I think, right, we need to see the gods. We need to see the place. We need to see... Like I'm thinking you come in over the ocean, probably have a dolphin bulldog just jump out of the waves. Really set the tone right away, you know? We see people the need- gods interact with the people, providing all amenities. We see the harvest god with a... You can just say the harvest god has a large scythe harvesting the crops next to other humans. Again, the god is like two feet taller for no reason. Yep. Appreciate those. People need to know. Listen, these motherfucking listeners voted on this one. <clears throat> I'm going to have fun with it. Okay? You got to have fun. That's why I'm saying we have an opening shot of a bulldog dolphin jumping out of the water as we go over the ocean. Make sure to read it for the people. Pan around the rest of the island showing all biospheres and in the sea jumping dolphins with bulldog faces and thunderstorms in the distance not touching the peaceful island. See, there's chaos out there, David. That's a little that's a little drop. I down. get I, I get, get it. Yeah. You get it? I get All right. that. <laughs> All right. So now we're in present day. So many years later, present yeah, day. Maybe before we start typing, here, bring us back to the full full page now. Okay, so where because you claim we have no structure to this. <laughs> we should probably start with that, right? Okay. We know where we want to end. It's the humans survive and kill the god. No, trap the gods. Trap the gods because we have trap the gods. But then we got the stinger, which is the chaos god. So you think yeah. like, oh shit. Okay, so trap gods. So at some point, there's the festival where the, the gods trillium. Are get rid of yeah the trillion. <clears throat> So between the festival and trapping the gods is where our, our action's going to be. That's probably going to be our. So should the the trapping of the gods happen at the trillium? Like that event is starting to play, take place, and that's where the final action scene happens, where it's some sort of fight or some sort of, I don't know, machine or whatever. Like that's the race to stop the trillium and then trap the gods then. So then there's a race against time, too. So maybe it's not like an active fight other than by the gods supporters fighting the other humans and then they're trying to trap the gods but the gods are just like this slow moving time bomb together which if they touch and come into one big sphere boom, everybody's gone. Yeah. (laughs) Well, we did establish that the first iteration of humans had technology to trap them right the first iteration of humans built a society that was resistant to the god's wiping ability so that was that little piece of pottery and that's what in the little foreshadowing the ravine is to me down in the darkness is where that city is and that's why they're saying tetlar so story where they hold out i don't think so we could do that. We didn't do that before. We could say that maybe there's a human in. Oh no, we could do. We could, he could find a, a stasis human that's from fifty thousand years ago. It's totally, you know, the chaos god George in disguise. That's Jim Beheim. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got to find George. But he's in disguise. He's a human from fifty thousand years ago. Because maybe he, maybe George is a secret god that no one ever talks about. So you think there's thirteen gods, or should there only be twelve gods and he's the thirteenth? I don't give a fuck about his having any connotations to do with the Catholic Church. So what the fuck does it matter? 
I'm going to need you to get more on board with this. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just saying, you're like, oh, 13's unlucky because there are 13 people in the Last Supper. You know, like, this is where we screw with them. We got 13 gods, and then the 14th one is the best up one. All right, fine. Or what if he's not the 14th god? What if he was the 7th god? And then he was expunged. You know what I mean? You're not following me. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Definitely the fourteenth god, because fourteenth is an unlucky bad number. What was that reference to? It's the seventh is supposed to be a lucky number, so he was the seventh among the gods, but then he got cast out. Oh, yeah. Why seven lucky? I don't know. Because six, three lucky because in the six, Chinese six, culture. Six, six is the name of the beast. Do we need a love interest? And is it George in disguise? It's a lot of George in disguise. No, I mean the same one. This human from 50,000 years ago is the love interest. But it turns out to be George in disguise anyway. That's double betrayal. Hmm. Because maybe he's falling for this human. I'm just saying, let's diversify. Let's get a lot of betrayal. All right, you could have... uh, Who's our lead? Mince. Mince. Mince could be falling for George a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if George is falling for him or just uses that as like... Well, maybe that's a sequel question we come through because maybe in the sequel, he's like, I never cared about you, but then he did. And like that's how mm. he gets through to him and he ends George's t- tyrannical reign. But okay. that's a sequel question. That's a sequel Yeah, that's question. the land of chaos. Yeah. So we got Mince and George... And Mince is falling for George. I was gonna say that. Okay, that, so that takes away like having to have another character. Mm-hmm. But how do we get? We find out. Oh, they're gonna destroy everyone. Then how does Mince convince the rest of the population they're all gonna die? You know, because at this point they probably aren't gonna believe it. So he probably has to tell them, and then is ignored. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get to the the festival, and we start seeing like the destruction of some stuff ha- happen. Yeah, or I agree that he has to start telling people that he's ignored, and then he might start showing like technology they haven't seen before, and then he's mm-hmm. called like a heretic and cast out. But do we want like an underground? rebellion already because maybe they're the ones that help him because he can't do it alone he can't do it just no he can't so i think there has to be some sort of underground rebellion but why would there be if they don't know about the trillium or maybe they do but they never could prove it and george or mince is the one that starts proving it because he finds it so maybe it's a subculture of a smaller amount of people who already think that the gods aren't there. Maybe they b- they believe they're the church of the first, the first humans. I don't think we need a church. Definitely church. There's got to no. be a lot of religious overtones. No! <laughs> gods and philosophy. Jesus. We're doing a movie called Arrangia. Land of the Gods. <laughs> okay, so what not Church of the Gods? Yeah. So I'm just saying. But just like a book, where, cl- so where do book these club of live? the first. Followers of the first. It could be that, you know? It doesn't have to Follow- be Church of the first. Followers of the first. How do they know? Maybe it's something similar where each of them have found something in the earth do they that live- is unexplainable. On the continent, or have they been expelled to, like, another island or something? Hmm. Because Mintz could get expelled, right? And he thinks, it's all, oh, my God, I'm going to go to this place. They don't have any help from the gods. Clearly, they're going to be, you know, wanting for food, shelter, water. And then he gets there, and it's this almost, like, futuristic utopia we're like, we don't need 
but then they have to be like let the let the trillion happen right and then we'll be the only ones here so mince has to convince them to like save the other people as well right i i like where you're going with this so maybe there is a second island he gets uh expelled or whatever too Mm -hmm. um but those are descendants of the first so they can survive the trillium because yeah they have a utopia they have a futuristic society cities whatever but they're totally cool with the gods being like listen our war ended in a stalemate so we just decided no interference so they can do with you what you want and then mince has to convince them to help their fellow humans q war coming up we have bulldog dolphins with breathing apparatuses up on there with m16s shooting at everybody definitely gonna happen i'm gonna write it in there you can't stop me because i'm writing we should say we should do lasers (laughs) because then you know not as definitely lasers bullets see maybe when he goes there he loses george so part of his drive is to get back to save george who's over there um, oh, I figured George was going with him. But I'm thinking like, because these people know about the 14th chaos God. So if he was there, they could have called him out on it. But he's not there. And they only think it's just mints. And then when they get there, and that's like triple betrayal. And that's how so he finds George, out. George does this thing where he creates, I don't know, someone kidnapping him or their ship breaking up or him being lost and back. Cause he knows that if he goes to this other Island, he's going to be completely going to be found out. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's a little bit of a love quest for Mintz, Who's been seduced by this evil God, but he doesn't know it till the yeah. very end. No. And then sequel Maybe the guy's not so bad after all. You just got to warm through that cold heart of his. Mince or Chaos or George? The chaos, or George, Chaos God, obviously. In the sequel, not in the... Sequel, sequel. Those are sequel Okay, times. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I like where we're going with this. This is what the people wanted. Fucking some abstract shit. So here we go. We got bulldog dolphins with breathing apparatuses and lasers. Storming Mm -hmm. the beaches of Rangia like it's fucking Normandy. Yep. (laughs) I see no problem with that. (laughs) Me neither. Definitely happening. All right. Let's get to writing. Okay. Now we got a couple things we're going to hit. You wrote down the beats that we need to hit. Yes. We have to mention the festival coming up. We have to find George. Um, in, in the old city, down in the ravine. Yeah. A little bit of a love story between those two. We have to have Mint <laughs> try and tell people and get exiled. And him and Georgie exiled. And then George sets up. We don't know he sets up, but George gets, you know, pulled back to arrange you. So now Mintz has to convince these followers of the first to attack the gods instead of just letting the Trillium happen. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because maybe I think what happens there is Mintz says he found something in the first city. And they're like, wait, you found the whatever. We got to come up with a name of it. It's an entrapment thing. A MacGuffin. And then that's the reason why also like, okay, you know, he gives like a long heartfelt speech of you have to save your fellow humans. We're all part of mankind and you've turned your back on us, blah, 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 blah. But I've also found this MacGuffin that you could actually win your battle with them. So let's go. Yeah. And I'm thinking like a Saw Gerrera type, you know, Forrest Whitaker. This is Mintz or the leader of the The leader of the followers of the first. Okay. All right. I like it. You know, we don't have any part in that anymore. They're like, well, you can win and you can save everybody. The gods! We couldn't win. 
He took down our city. But now, now we have the power again. So we will storm the beaches. We will fight in the streets. We will fight in our homes. So you're doing an old Saw Gerrera. <laughs> yeah, and then we're also doing the whole Winston Churchill speech. Obviously, everybody knew that. Everybody knew that reference. All yeah. right. So we got many years later. Uh, Immense is now a young man. Stands at a table covered in hand-drawn maps overlooking a dig site of his own making. Uh, and is it in the ravine that he started with? I think it's in a, just a field right now. Okay. Like, how quickly do we want to get to the ravine? Because I think that's the first shot. He's got to have other people there being like, dude, what are you doing? Fucking stupid. Yeah, you're wasting your time. Yeah. I got a good one. Okay. The leisure God. Like, we start with, like, the leisure God, and they're in these fields, and there's a bunch of people, and someone's playing him. A loot, and and then we like kind of keep panning over, and then we see mints already covered in you know pouring over his maps, and that's who the people are like. What what are you doing? What are you digging for? Like, okay, next scene. Are we gonna go back to like his mom and his parents? Yeah, I was thinking we got we got to show a little family. Yeah, it's all it's all about family. And maybe they're um so let's go interior. Maybe she's sick and he's like, Why don't you have, you know, the gods help you? And they're like, Oh, they're they're busy, you know, and so it's like started to create some like, oh, you don't help the, you know, your most devout people. Interior mints his home later. His mother is where left her on the couch. Sick. So is this modern day? I because I'm thinking also like Roman. Yeah, remember right. this was peak Roman. Yeah, except you know, like so is it couch or like you know she's just on her lounge, her her chaise. I'm just trying sure? to get a picture of it. You know, like we don't yeah, have right. a blue suede couch. We have like a a wooden chaise with like a puff pillow stuff with feathers or something, right? Blue suede. Not how you spell suede. <laughs> Shut your whore mouth. Languishing on the what is the fucking languishing bed, sick and dying. Boom. Mints asks her if she's seen the what do we want to call this one? Medical God. God of health and healing. Helio God. Nope. Helio's son. Health God. <laughs> Keep we it really... simple. Stupid. Are we saying she doesn't want to bother him or the gods think, didn't see No, her? I think they're too busy. Like, you know. She says no. She's like, I don't want to wait, you know. They were. There's like a four-day wait outside. and They were too busy. Got you know, it. Look at that in the dialogue. <laughs> you get that in the dialogue. Dad's clearly not around. What if his dad was banished and he's on the island of the first of the... Where he went to the island and he's expecting to see him, but he's he's dead, you know. Go ahead and read what I wrote. Dad is dead. Dead as a doorknob in the corner of the room, rotting, and no one will say or do anything about it. It's gross. Very gross. (laughs) All right, let's go ahead and just. Well, you get what I'm saying? Like, what if he was in exile and then, you know, maybe that's why Mince is, you know, given some sort of. How about she says, she says she didn't want to push it. You know what you know happened, happened to your father to when your he father. asked for too much. See, you're over here trying to say it as if you came up with it. I did come up with it. That's literally where I was typing it. You said he was dead in the corner rotting. Yeah, because that's hilarious. What if it's just a dead body in the corner? No one doing anything about it. Okay, then we got Exterior. Should we say Mince promises to help? So maybe he's also trying to search for a way to help her. That's also why he's digging this stuff up. Hmm. We should probably mention the tales of the first society, you know? And maybe that's what he's digging for. He's like, once I find the technology, we won't even need the God's help, you know? 
So maybe we do it here. She says she didn't want to push it. You know what happened to your father when he asked for too much? Just like those tales of the first society. Or just like those old stories about the first society. I think we're going to have to reveal that chaos was the one who told those stories to the, to the people. That's in the sequel. It's like, oh, yeah, I disguise myself as an old woman and go around telling. We're doing a lot of sequel work here. <laughs> Just saying. It's like, how did they get these stories of the first society? Unless the gods use it like as a. As a warning. Yeah. So this is more of a warning. Mint says he'll find the Those first Those are stories society. the gods tell us to keep it scared, you know? Why would they lie? It says once he finds the first society, we won't need the gods to heal you. Sure. Fuck it. Next. Let's just keep it moving. Keep it moving. This is where we go to the ravine. Yeah, let's go to the ravine. Maybe we go back to his original dig site and see that someone has like filled it all in. The god of harvest. It's like we're we need this room. Or the god of leisure. It's like we're doing a soccer game. We need you can't have a big hole in this field. Love it. Then I think he goes to ravine, falls in. Yeah, this is exterior. Like... He's walking. He's upset. He's drinking. Falls into the ravine. Okay. And then I think there's like a, a tunnel system. And he just, you know, breaks through that entrance into the tunnel system. It'd be funny if the god of leisure, when he attacks people, he's just like making them dance until they're getting so exhausted that they just fall into the ground and dead. Sure. It's like, we can, we it's can like, write that like, later. He's like, dance for me. And then all these people are just like going crazy. And then they start collapsing one by one. Inside a cave, is it interior or exterior? I guess it's interior, right? Right? So, yeah, it's interior. inside. So he's into the cityscape city now. Where mm. is the human in stasis? I think he's got to wander through the city and see something like that looks kind of like a hospital type thing. So that's where he goes for the technology, thinking, oh, my God, like, what well, could help? And then he goes in and he finds the human in stasis in that building. All right, so Mintz goes back to this dig site, but finds that the leisure god has turned it into a soccer field. Mintz protests, but the people laugh at him, and the leisure god drinks more wine. Exterior, field, night. Mintz is upset and drinking, walking alone in a field, muttering to himself about the gods. He slips again on a sandy cliff and falls into the ravine. He hears the same whisper from years ago on the wind and climbs down. Interior, cave, night. Mintz travels down the cave, the whisper growing louder. He finds an illuminated, massive expanse deep underground with buildings he's never seen, but no people anywhere. He follows the whisper into the city. Interior, city of the first, later. Mintz travels down a paved road into a cityscape devoid of life. He arrives downtown and finds a building that looks like a hospital. The whisper is coming from there. He follows it in. Interior, city of the first hospital, night. Mintz walks into the hospital and travels through looking for supplies. Finally, he comes to a room further underground where the whisper sounds like a shout. He finds a human trapped in a blue shimmer. Mintz walks forward, stumbles, and power is cut, freeing the human. George, comes out. What does George look like? Athletic. I mean, he probably looks like a god, right? So, no, god no, this is this a human. Yeah, no, but like, but like John Stamos. Yeah, John Stamos. John, George. A young John Stamos. <laughs> a young John Stamos. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Coughs to life. He explains what the city is. He explains that he was a member of the First Society. Um, and he, uh, what do you call it? Volunteered to be this voice so if anything happened to them in the future they would have some connection to their past uh, what what are you thinking all right george a young john stamos <laughs> costs the life <laughs> george and mitch talk and mince learns of the first society and how george got trapped there in the first trillium and then i think this is where mince 
finds out that the Trillium is not just a celebration of life, but it's where the gods tried to wipe out the humans. Or they do. They have. Yes. Because this there's been like five so far, right? Yeah. Mintz finds out that the Trillium is not a celebration like the gods portrayed, but an apocalyptic event to wipe out the humans from the face of Arangia. Sorry. And then they save the babies and start a society new. So now they got to go back up to the surface. He's got to tell them what he found. And then he's got to get exiled. But they got to fall in love somehow. Or does he bring George home? Yeah, brings him home to his house. Okay. They think it, and then George is like, I can't I can't save your mother without our technology. You got to go back down there or bring her down there? No. <sighs> So they could go back and it could be, you know, closed off again from one of the other gods. And they're like, well, no, we got to go down there. And that's when they start the fuss and the thing. And he says that there's a brings back George to his house. George sees his mother. I can he says he can save her. Uh, but I just need to get my stuff from down there. We'll bring her tomorrow. They spend the night talking on the coast under the stars. Oh, oh, romantic, yeah. you know, a little bit, you know what I mean. When they go back the next day, they find that one of the gods, uh, maybe the gods of buildings and mechanic, has put something for the trillium blocking off the ravine. Okay, like, we got to get down there, start this whole fuss. No, 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 can't do it. He starts to fight and push his way down there. He gets exiled. Okay, but at what point does he start telling people that the Trillium is where they're going to die? I know he wants to save his mom, but he also has to tell people, like, we're going to die. Does he know that yet? Well, that's what George talked about with him. Well, that's where he starts freaking out. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, I'm going to save my mom. Is this for the Trillium? It's all for the Trillium. It's like, don't believe them. The Trillium is where they're gonna they're gonna kill us all. And they're like, "What are you?" T-? You know, and he's like working himself. He's like, "It's a Trillium." Is I swear, there's a city down there, and it's, and they kill it all, and they they start over with the babies, and and he just starts spewing all what he's been told from George, but it makes him sound like a real lunatic. So, and then he's got a decent, you know, like I denounce the gods, and then they're like, oh. And then his mom's even like, oh my God, you can't do that. And then he gets. Mm-hmm. Now he gets exa. Do we need him instead of having to go back specifically? Maybe he needs like a power source to power the technology down there. And he's trying to get that first. And then that's where he like finds so him many the following. Things. I know, I know, I know. Like, I mean, I feel like we already have to just get to the fighting of the with the gods. Like, I want to see some god fight, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the third act. So what I'm would power t- this? Like this, like a star, the energy of a star. Are we in the second act yet? No, we're in the first act still. When do you want him to get exiled? End of the second is that the act. Midpoint, or is, is that? All is lost moment. Probably the all is lost moment. But then you can't have any new information coming in. That's fair. So it's got to be midpoint in the middle of act two. He gets exiled. Yeah. All is lost moment is when they're not going to help him save the people and his mom and George. So our character has very specific stakes. He wants to save his mom. And then later on when George is taken off the boat or whatever, wants to save George. And super noble, he wants to save everybody else. But really... He's fighting for those two. Mm-hmm. Because once he gets exiled, they're like, D- you could just stay here. Trillium doesn't affect us. We just power up our shields and it goes through and then we're fine. Because he gets there and then he's got to find these people who have been preparing for the Trillium in a different way, a defensive way instead of like mm-hmm. a party way. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we know, you know, we know what's going on. Because they've had 10,000 years to prepare for this, this society. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're super, super advanced. We're talking about 
not even this time far into the future yeah i'm thinking like, like it's not cars a boat, are flying it, like, through the air yeah it's a hovercraft over the water yeah. like in mandalorian you know mm-hmm mm-hmm but retro 70s technology for no no touch screens everywhere just flying up and then they kick george off and they're like or kick mince off and they're like oh this guy's gonna be our sacrifice for the trillium because maybe it's a god that brings him to the exile mm-hmm. you know and at that point he's like we've won what's it matter if you know the truth so why aren't they killing him? Who? Why aren't the guys just killing Mints? Why would they exile him instead of killing him? Because they don't kill anyone. Well, until the Trillium. And they kill They everybody. don't know that, but the people don't know that. True. So it's just like, if you do something bad, exile. Exile. Yeah. To that that's island over this, there. Yeah, and that's how they keep this perfect society is the threat you, okay. of exile to the land of no gods where you actually have to work and provide for yourself Pittsburgh Pittsburgh <laughs> okay so I'm really I'm really torn as to like if we're already down there we get George George comes back up he knows about the trillium now. So why like why is he not already freaking out about that telling people? Why do we have to go back there to save his mom? I feel like he has to get maybe he's got to bring his mom down there. He has to bring his mom down there. So maybe we say this up here then. Start over with the babies. Mint says he doesn't care. Maybe he doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to save his mom. And Min- and George says, we can save your mom if you bring her down here. And we'll even be safe from the Trillium. So we talked about how they're going to come back to the home to mm-hmm. get his mom. And they're going to try to go back into the ravine to save her. And then we're going to have the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, no, no, no. I don't like this. Also, we got to see where the Trillium is going to take place. The center of the island. The city. Okay. The city called Seer Accuse. I thought Seer was the main god, and then Akiz oh, yeah. was his here, wife. Here we, here we go. Mintz and George arrive at Mintz's house. His mother is nowhere to be seen. She left a note saying she was going into Seer, Akiz, the main city at the center of the island for the Trillium in the hopes of being cured there. Mintz screams in frustration. The Trillium is only a week away, and Seer, Akiz, is a two-day journey. George says they'll have time. Exterior, road, night. George and Mintz are on the road, camped down for the night next to a beautiful river. They drink, laugh, and George tells Mintz all about how beautiful the first city was before the gods, except one, definitely laying the hints for the chaos god, me and Joe, him. got jealous and went to war with the humans. He tells them about the war and how he doesn't know what happened as he froze himself on accident the day of the Trillium. Everyone he knows is gone, and that was 50,000 years ago. George and Mintz grow closer. Exterior, Seer, accused today. Mince and George arrive in Syracuse. So named it is the seat of the king and queens of the gods, Seer and Accuse. <laughs> the city is draped in gold and decorations for the Trillium. Screens are saying how all the gods are coming here and it is a once in 10,000 year event. The people are buzzing. Mince is getting agitated. Exterior, Seer, Accuse, Square, Day. Mince and George find Mince's mom in the square outside of Seer and Accuse's palace. Mintz tries to get his mom to come with him, but she wants to see the king and queen. She knows she will be saved. Mintz screams that it's all a lie, and the Trillium is going to kill all of them. Proud around stops and looks at him. They call him a heretic. Mintz says that George is from 50,000 years ago, but turns and George is gone. Seer and accused come out from their palace and exile mouths Mintz for speaking blasphemy. So where'd George go? Definitely got taken away, bro. Definitely... Not left of his own devices. He's been captured. Mm. So now he goes, he's exiled. To the island of the first. Exterior. Hovercraft. Over. The. What did I call it? The turmoil tide. 
day. All right, which God's bringing him? The law and order God? <laughs> dun, 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 Elliot. Uh, <laughs> Elliot? <laughs> Isn't that his name? Elliot, the bald guy's name in Law and Order? Oh, I don't know. Law and Order God is taking Mintz over to the Exile Island. Mintz says that he's right, and the Law and Order God says it doesn't matter. It's better this way. No one will believe you anyway. All right, Devin. Get your full-on Saw Gerrera happening. What are we doing? This is on you. I'm going to hit collaborate. Mm-hmm. Not going to work. Um, I don't know. Saw's got to be like... We're, he sees the... They have to have some animosity towards these other guys. You know, maybe... The law and order guy doesn't take him right to the water. He's like, all right, jump out, swim. And you're like, you're not going to take me to land? He's like, mm, mm, you'll see. And then he gets in there and it's like, okay. They're all hesitant and like, like shooting at him. What do we want? People in futuristic garb with laser guns po- coming out of the trees and pointing at him? Yeah. Do we ever set up something that was going to trap the gods? Not at all. We got to go back and do that. Yeah. George tells Mintz about how beautiful the first city was. He tells him about the war. Now he... Well, tells him how they were advanced. They even had, you know... Was close. The capability to even trap the gods if they wanted to. To perfecting a device to trap the gods. And that's what we find out. That's what fucking George was in. Was a, It was a prison for gods. Yeah. So they will do it on the road at night. He tells him about the war and how he was close to perfecting a device to trap the gods. It's still down there in the city. George doesn't know what happened as he froze himself on accident in the day of the trillium. There we go. All right, so we set it up. Nice. Love it. Exterior city of the first people or whatever. All right. What's this? I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going to be I'm going to be your pulpit here, okay? I'm going to be the voice of you, Devin. I'm just going to type what you say. What exterior what? Pulpit doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> ex- dear, your exile city, exile city, day, night, day. Okay, what do we got? Mince meets with Jay Wright. Um, Jay Ryan, Jay Wright, Jay Wright. Okay, an old Saw Guerrera type. type. <laughs> We're Saw really says... going deep on these college basketball, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jay tells him that they'll be protected from the Trillium. Uh, there's nothing they could do. I get over it. He's like, I have to get back there. You don't understand. We can stop this. My friend George, who's from 50,000 years ago, found a way to trap the gods. If we trap the gods, maybe we can convince them to not have the Trillium. Because these people are all exiled. I mean, some of them were probably born there and families were created. But I think there's also exiles. So it's like you could see your daughter again. You could see your So th- this is this is the speech to go. So is this another scene? Like in a scene or two? What do they do? We'd have to cut back to the trillium and the preparing and everyone gathering and seeing all the people come in. Yeah. So uh, he gets there, he gets to the exile city. Saw Guerrera type tells him. You're safe here. You're among exiles. We can outla- We can protect you from the Trillia. Cut to Seer, Accuse, City. The gods are almost there, are getting closer to the city, and they're talking about the preparations for the new world. Something like that. Yeah, we hear their plan. Like, oh, this time around, I'm going to have, you know, everyone sing instead of talk. <laughs> Or I am. We're doing iambic parameter. We're not doing iambic parameter. <laughs> <laughs> Should they mention Mintz, or is he just so far below their concern? I so think they probably. I've, I mean, I think someone's got to say something like, "You don't think the people are going to get riled up from that other one saying about this, right?" And they're like, "Nah, this is." It goes off without a hitch every time. That way, it implies it's happened multiple times. Yeah. Then I think we go back to the Exile City. Mintz is trying to like. Whoa, 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 whoa! Are you fucking hijack. typing? Are you fucking typing over here? Okay. Hijack Are you I gotta, I gotta write this down. To bring All him right. back. And Saw's like, you can't do it. And he's like, I had a daughter before I was exiled. Like, don't you want to fight for her? Can't we? F-? And then you know that rallies everyone. 
I I forgot all about that because I'm still in on the last scene. So you keep that in your head for later. All right. So interior, Seer, Accused Palace Day. Seer and Accused are discussing the upcoming Trillium with a few of the gods that have already arrived, like the Leisure God. They're discussing what the new world will be like. One god asks if they think there'll be any trouble because of this Mince guy. The rest shoot it down and say it'll go off without any trouble, like every time before. The Leisure God really pushes for everyone to speak in iambic pentameter. The other gods shut it down. Exterior, Exile City, Hoverport, Night. Mince is at the hoverport trying to steal a craft to take to Arrangia. He is caught and Jay Wright comes in with his guard. Jay tells him again it's no use. He has a daughter there too, but they can't win against the gods. Mince tells them that they can and that there's a device down in the city of the first that can trap the gods. Jay Wright rallies the troops. All right, read that, read that one. How do they lure the gods into the cave? Read that one out. A shitload of hovercrafts is crossing the tide for war. Alongside are bulldog dolphins jumping in the sea towards the beach. The bulldog dolphins storm the beach with laser guns as fighting commences. Mince and the others arrive, but the sky goes gold. The trillium has started. So they're just going blasting? Oh, uh, yeah. Or does one of them have to get down to the, the cave? I think they're on a mission to get to the cave. They don't have to get the device to Syracuse. They just got to get to the thing. I think we have to have the big fight with the big crowd and the people being killed. Like it takes away all the gravity of everything. If we just then bring 13 gods to a cave and they're fighting, you know, saw Guerrera and mince with a handful of other people. Like I want to see the throughout the thousands of people in this Coliseum type thing, just being murdered. Lightning coming from the sky, fire starting Things collapsing onto people. All right, I like I like that coming in with lasers shooting at the god. All right, so what about if we go back and we say that George has the device with him, but it still needed the blood of the a god to work, or something like that. To trap so, a god, you need the blood of a god. Yeah. Okay. He tells him about the war and how close he was to protecting a device to trap the gods. He shows him it. All right. George shows Mince the device, but tells him that in order to trap a god, you need the blood of a god. When the Trillium started, he tried to fight, but froze himself on accident. So there we go. So Mince tells them that the device is with his friend George in Syracuse. So that's why they're storming the beach, going to the city, lightning. Skies are gold. I don't think this bulldog storming the beach with laser guns is going to work. Why are there devout humans there preparing defenses? You know, I mean, as much as we really want the bulldog storming the beaches, just don't think that scene works, you know? Yeah. All right. We'll have to get rid of it. I think at this right. point, it's just like a big fight. They end up trapping the gods. Um, the exile people move to whatever, and then we just gotta reveal fucking George. You're get, you're, just you're, get, you're not getting, you're not super thrilled about this. I feel like you texted your sister, you realized it was a spite, and you lost all fucking. God I didn't damn lose all spite. Spite. I'm just saying, like, I I get how fucking difficult it is now to just sit here when someone else types. I wish you told me that you had bought this and didn't just spring it on me. What I, would you have done then differently? I could have gotten the 12, and then we could have been collaborating on it. Okay. You know? All right. Well, that's for next time. What do you think, Devin? I always, that's why I always talked a lot while you were typing so that I was trying to like keep the through line of the show. Yeah, but there's also like you adding stuff that didn't make sense that would just piss me off because I was typing. So that's why I was trying not to freaking add things when you're typing. Yeah, but that's funny, and the people think it's funny. Or at no least I did. It's funny. No one even listens to our fucking outline episode. That's not true. They, they, have, the, they have the same amount of listens as people. They hate them. <laughs> they don't hate them. I think you're just like, oh my God, I'm not typing. What do I do? How do I keep the show? And you're just not. They're, they're, what's the show when you're just literally watching you type? Because we say it out loud. It's mints, tells that that's not entertaining that's not entertaining yeah what what do you think i did the whole time you were typing i don't know it just pissed me off 
That's all I remember. Because <laughs> you'd be typing, and I, or I'd be typing, and you'd be talking, and I'd be like, stop saying that. <laughs> all right. So we got our outline? No, we're not there yet. I think I'm right. basically <laughs> there. The last scene is just a fight scene, and then they trap the gods. They trap Sira, you know, and somehow he's like the source of all the gods' powers. So that makes them all lesser, and then they can trap them all. Fighting commences in Seer, Accuse, Mince, Spots, George, and Rendezvous. George says they have to get to Seer as he is Well, he's there. not like, where were you? Why did you leave? You know? Mintz asks George what happened. Apologizes. Says he was scared of being exiled and wanted to finish what he started all those years ago. He said they can still do this and save his mom and all the people. Do they kiss? Gotta. They kiss. Gotta. George says they need to get to the palace and get Seer. Seer is the key. With his blood, he can trap the rest of the gods. All right, so then we got to go interior. Syracuse pa- Castle, palace. So this is the point where, I, since I'm talking to you, you can talk, keep it engaged for the audience. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to cut all that because you were talking in one word for 20 seconds. So That's what you did all the time. Cut it. All yeah, the time. and you cut it. Did you not yes, cut I it? Did. did you not cut it? I did, you're right. I'm but that's, saying, I, like, I had that sweet joke in there where, you know, bulldogs are there. You're like, yep, that's right. And I call it, dude, these guys are so ill-prepared. You're like, yep, 100%. All right, let's start at the beginning then, huh? I mean, <laughs> do we not? <laughs> I'm really, 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 honestly, I'm legitimately excited to see what the fuck you got to do with this. <laughs> Arrangia, Land of the Gods by Zach and Devin. Here we go. You want to do the first part? This is what you wanted, people. This is what you wanted. (laughs) It's the land of the gods, set in the prehistory of the planet Nostros, a.k.a. Pentalon 5. Arrangia is a continent-sized island surrounded by the turmoil tide, the far-ranging and all-encompassing ocean. It is the land populated by humans, ruled over and provided for by 13 gods who walk among them. And the gods are like two feet taller than the humans for no reason whatsoever. We see the gods interacting with the peoples, providing the amenities. Amenities. We see the harvest god, the large scythe, harvesting the crops next to other humans. Again, the god is like two feet taller for no reason. Pan around the rest of the island, showing all biospheres in the, and the sea, jumping dolphins with bulldog faces and thunderstorms in the distance, not touching the peaceful island. Exterior, Arrangia, day. A young boy with sand-swept hair, Mince, is playing with his friends in an idyllic field. He goes to catch the ball, but he slips on the sandy edge of a cliff and tumbles down. He is unhurt, but finds a piece of pottery in the kicked-up earth depicting people, a place, and technology he has never seen before. Mince looks down the ravine and into the darkness. Tell our story. Who Mince is, is enthralled. <laughs> Mince isn't... This is fucking George, bro. Mince well, is enthralled. You didn't mention a ghost. You just said, you know. There's a whisper. Mince okay. is enthralled, but his mother calls him from above. He pockets the pottery, takes one last look down the ravine, smiles, and climbs back up. The whisper is George leading him down into the city. Okay. Scroll up here. Please. Like this way? Which way do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just I, but I you're down read. here. I can't read it because my microphone is down on the fucking screen. I can't uh, fucking read it. How am I supposed to know that? I just said scroll up, and you're like, you don't know what you're going to go up for. So I'm you want it you. here? You want it in this position up top? Yes, because I can't okay. read it down low because my microphone is blocking that. 
So you gotta say Steer scroll it, down. It, so I go dig down site. It goes up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Range it, dig site, present day, day. Many years have passed, and people are lounging in the fields as the leisure god plays his lute and drinks wine. Pan over to Mince, now a young man, dirt covered. Stands at a table covering in his hand drawn maps, overlooking a dig site of his own making. People mock Mince for his digging. Leisure God shouts, more wine! Interior, Mince is home later. Mince arrives home. His mother is where he left her, languishing on the bed, sick and dying. Mince asks her if she's seen the health god, and she says no, they were too busy. She says he didn't want to push it. You know what happened to your father when he asked too much, just like those old stories of the first society. Mint says, once he finds the first society, we won't need the gods to heal you. Yeah, we totally forgot about the dad aspect later on, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Mint's dig site, day. Mint goes back to his dig site, but finds the leisure god is turned into a soccer field. Mint's protests, but the people laugh at him. The leisure god drinks more wine. Stereo, Stereo. field, night. Oh, you're Mince going again? Upset <laughs> drinking, okay. walking alone in the field. Muttering to himself by the gods, he slips again on the same sandy cliff and falls into the ravine. We hear the whisper of the wind from the ravine, and he climbs on down. Who's the whisper, Devin? I don't fucking know. I guess we'll find out. Interior, cave, night. Because we decided that when you're in a cave, it's interior, not exterior. That's what we decided. Mance travels down the cave. The whispering grows louder. He finds an illuminated, massive expanse deep underground with buildings he's never seen, but no people anywhere. He follows the whisper into the city. Interior. City of the first. Later. Mintz travels down a paved road into a cityscape devoid of life. He arrives downtown and finds a building that looks like a hospital. The whisper is coming from there. He follows it in. Period. City of the first hospital night. Mintz walks into the hospital and travels through looking for supplies. Finally, he comes to a room further underground where the whisper sounds like a shout. He finds a human trapped in a blue shimmer. Mintz walks forward, stumbles, and power is cut, freeing the human. George, a young John Stamos, coughs to life. George and Mintz talk, and Mintz learns that, the first, that he's from the first society and how George got trapped there in the first trillium. Mintz finds out that the Trillium is not a celebration like the gods portrayed, but a cyclical apocalyptic event to wipe out the humans from the face of Arrangia and start over with the babies. Mintz says he doesn't care about that, he just wants to save his mom. George says we can save your mom if we bring her down here and be safe from the Trillium. Exterior, Mintz's house, day. Never mind, that's interior, not exterior. Let's go ahead and clean that up. <laughs> interior, Mintz's house, day. Mintz and George arrive at Mintz's house. <laughs> His mother is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> she left a note saying she was going into Sarah Acuse, the main city at the center of the island, for the Trillium in hopes of being cured. Mintz screams in frustration. <clears throat> the Trillium is only a week away, and Sarah Acuse is two days away. George says they will have time. Exterior, road, night. George and Mintz are on the road, camped down for the night next to a beautiful river. They drink and laugh. And George tells Mintz all about how beautiful the first city was before the gods, except one, got jealous and went to war with the humans. Tells him about the war and how he was close to perfecting a device to trap the gods. George shows Mintz the device, but tells him that in order to trap a god, you need the blood of a god. When the Trillium started, he tried to fight, but froze himself on accident. And everyone he knows is gone. And that was 50,000 years ago. George and Mintz grow closer. Mintz and George, Sarah, exterior, Sarah, accused day. Mintz and George arrive in a city so named for its seat of the king and the queen of the gods, Sarah and accused. The city is draped in gold and decorations for the trillium. Screens are saying how the, all the gods are coming here. And it's once in a 10,000 year event. People are buzzing. <laughs> Mintz is getting agitated. <laughs> what are you laughing at? We fucking named these people Seer and Accuse. We are so right. great at coming up with fucking names, man. <laughs> Listen, this is what the people wanted, okay? This is what the people wanted. Exterior, Seer, Accuse, Square, Day. Mince and George find Mince's mom in the square outside Seer and Accuse's palace. Mince tries to get his mom to come with him, but she wants to see the king and queen. She knows she will be saved. 
Mint screams that it's a lie and that the Trillium is going to kill all of them. The crowd stops and looks at him. They call him a heretic. Mint says that George is from 50,000 years ago, but turns and George is gone. Seer and Accuse come out of their palace and exile Mint for speaking blasphemy. Seer, hovercraft over the turmoil tide. Law and order god is taking Mint over to the exile island. Mint says bum, that he's bum. right. And the law and order god says it doesn't bum, matter. Bum. It's better, bum, 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 bum. it's better this way, and no one will <laughs> believe you anyway. The Law and Order God bum, stops bum. several yards away from the island. It tells Mince to swim. Mince asks why, but the Law and Order God just bum, says bum. you'll see and pushes him in overboard. <laughs> Exterior, exile, island, beach, day. Mint swims up to the beach out of breath, scared, and when people dressed in futuristic garb come out of the trees and points laser guns at him. Mintz throws his hands up and says he's friendly. The gods have abandoned him. The future bros take Mintz into the jungle. Steer Exile City Day. Mintz meets with Jay Wright, an old Saw Guerrero type, and Jay tells him they'll be protected from the Trillium. Mintz <laughs> wants a fight, but Jay says there's nothing they can do. Just stay and live. Interior. Seer Accuse Palace Day. Seer and Accuse are discussing the upcoming Trillium with a few of the gods they have already arrived, like the Leisure God. They're discussing what the new world will be like. One god asks if they think there'll be any trouble because of this Mince guy, but the rest shoot him down, saying he'll go off without any trouble like every time before. The leisure god really pushes for everyone to speak in iambic pentameter now. The other god shut it down. Steer Exile City, Hoverport. Night. Mince is at the Hoverport trying to steal a craft to take to Arrangia. He is caught, and Jay Wright comes in with his guard. Jay tells him there's, again, no use. He had a daughter there, too, but they can't win against the gods. Mintz tells them that they can, and there's a device with George and Seer, accused that can trap the gods if we get the blood of a god. Jay Wright rallies the truth. Exterior, turmoil, tide, day. A shitload of hovercrafts are crossing the tide for war. Alongside are bulldog dolphins jumping in the sea towards the beachhead. Mintz and the others arrive, but the sky goes gold. The trillium has started. Mintz and the others power the hovercrafts towards Seer, accused. Seer accused later. Fighting commences in Seer accused. Mint spots George in rendezvous. rendezvous. Yeah, I just, you spelled it so poorly that I had to, you know. Spell rendezvous. Ah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, Mintz asks George what happened. <laughs> George apologizes, apologizes, but says he was scared of being exiled and wanted to finish what he started all those years ago. So they can still do this and save his mom and all the people. They kiss. George says they need to get to the palace and get Seer. Seer. Seer is the key. With his blood, he can trap the rest of the gods. Just Seer, not Sira. <laughs> well, I, you normally do Seer accuse, and I just, you know, got reading. In interior, Seer accuse palace later. I'm pretty jealous because you get the next one after this, and that's the best one. But we got to get the story for the people. Seer accused later. Mintz, George, and some fighters led by Jay Wright and bulldog dolphins with laser guns storm the castle. They take down some guards and some devout humans who are super ill-prepared because they've like never been in war before. They get to the throne room. Yeah, they're just like, uh, it's like soccer, right? <laughs> um, Seer, Seer accused palace throne room later. They get into the main chamber. All 13 gods are there. Mince turns and George is gone again. The bulldog dolphins are disposed of by the gods easily. Mince is taken and put on the dais in the middle. He will see this trillium completed. George appears behind Seer, cuts Seer with a golden knife. Blood trickles onto the device. George reveals he is the 14th god of chaos. It's taken him 50,000 years, but he finally defeated his twin brother, Seer. George grows two feet for literally no reason. Fuck the CGI budget. The gods are trapped. The Trillium has been canceled. George thanks Mintz for his help. Tells him the age of the gods is over. It's time for the Age of Chaos. Ayo, into the sequel. Arrange ya. Age of Chaos. You know it. That is for literally some reason. The movie that people wanted us to do an outline on. So there you go, people. You got it. Arrange ya, Land of the Gods, leading directly into the sequel, Arrange ya. Land of Chaos. The Age of Chaos. Sorry. Jesus. As I mean, that was right. You're right. <clears throat> but here we are, folks, at the end of the second study. 
We are at the end of our gods and philosophy build, and now it is time for Devin to reveal to everyone what the next theme is for the next study, and also what the next movie we are studying is. Devin definitely has this prepared. Is not a hundred percent turning to his computer and googling themes as we speak. But Devin, why don't you grace us? with this long thought out theme that you have been just really pouring over for the people. What you know that they want to watch and study. Is it love? Is it death? Is it money? I don't know. And I know that none of you know either. And you are at the edge of your seat. And am I vamping to stall and give Devin more time? Probably 100%. Do I like the sound of my voice? Usually not. But now this I do because Devin's back. Our theme. <laughs> all right. Our theme for the season two, study three. We had, what was our first one? Living up to your potential. Living up to your potential. We had gods and philosophies. Best one so far. Now we're going to have survival. Okay. And we're going to start it off with the 1994 classic. Castaway Redemption. Oh, I thought it was Castaway. Shawshank, baby. You're really coming after Paddington, too, aren't you? Because that that might be a contender. That's a good movie. That's a good movie. Makes a lot of bad movies, but this one, this one might be good. This one might be good. I'm really actually already the brains in my mind, the brain in my mind is turning. How do we take the Shawshank Redemption and turn that into our movie idea? arrange you age of chaos for that part you know yeah all right Devin. well you heard it here folks study three survival that's the theme and the first movie for next week is the shawshank redemption and hopefully no not hopefully 100 percent, you will be listening to this on monday on your favorite podcast for Either on YouTube, Spotify. Yeah, it's going to be about 20 minutes. It's just going to be the beginning and then the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take out everything in between. There you have it, folks. That's our outline for Ranger, Land of the Gods. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it. Thanks for voting. If you got any uh, inquiries, feel free to email us at architectsoflore at gmail.com. We are on Instagram at architectsoflore. Twitter, Ark of Lore, don't worry about it. YouTube, this one might be on YouTube. Yeah, I don't think, I think you just got to search for Architects of Lore. And uh, TikTok, I think we got one video, I don't know. We got um, the cat video. Go. Yeah. Cat video did numbers. Have it, folks. There you have it, folks. And remember, check out the description below for Taylor Cross, I'm with you. The electric oh, yeah. three, three minute video. Uh, you can listen to our discussion earlier in the podcast forum, but Devin, if you got a story in your head, but you can't seem to get it out, do it. Just fucking do it, bros. We got bulldog dolphins with laser guns in this fucking movie, okay? It just does not matter at this point. It somehow works. It works on a lot of levels. So just do it because we believe in you. If it sucks, who cares? That's what editing's for. What do you got at that time? Good night, everybody. Bye. Really doing a lot of thinking over there. Definitely not doing your fucking Duolingo, are you? I don't know what you're talking about. What are you looking at? How do you save a dot web P as a... I don't know what a dot what P is. What are you laughing at? <laughs> That said wet pee and you didn't realize it.
<laughs> Same flavor. Same flavor. The longer you take, the more editing you got to do, buddy. So, it's already recording. I think you should do the intro this time since you're going to no. be editing it. No. Don't just take it from the top. You could do no, it. I don't know the intro. Fine. Good morning, I good evening. Single, I didn't hear a single part of that. You <laughs> like a single part of that. Uh, do you think I, I was too loud or I was I don't too... know, but you immediately started. Like, did I go up to out. alto? I went up to alto. It I got to keep out. it a soprano. Wait, which one's and higher? You were, alto or soprano? Know. Alto? All right, so I got to keep it soprano. Maybe even go baritone on it. Okay, ready? I think you just have to start with a good, and you know, like. Got it, got it. Because you came in so hot. Gradually roll it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Oh, shit. Am I supposed to be on the left? Let's move that over real quick. That first 12 minutes, I am on the right. (laughs) Now it's time for the movie movie game. Have you seen that Always Sunny in Philadelphia is back? I watched the first two episodes. No, I haven't. I haven't watched Always Sunny since like season six, and they're in season 16 now. Yeah, you got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. Season 15 is like, wow. When they dark. go to Ireland, real dark. It's emotional. It's not dark. But you're like, I didn't know the show had the capability to do this. And it does. Interesting. After 15 years. You're just going to say not allowed to collaborate unless you pay $80 for the upgrade version, isn't it? What the fuck is that? That was a weird noise my cat made. 60-40 throws up on the bed. Now we're good. Jesus, I have the worst headache. It just got worse and it got hotter here and I got sweaty and I'm just like, oh my god. This is three hours long we've been doing this. Yeah. These ones are usually longer. Yeah, I hate outline episodes. (laughs)